Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be asking a question, a question that you may have seen elsewhere online. Uh, why don't moderate Muslims condemn terror attacks? And we're going to be talking about that question in relation to three terror attacks that have taken place in the UK this year. The Westminster attack on the 22nd of March, the Manchester Arena bombing on the 22nd of May, and the London Bridge attack on the 3rd of June. Uh, three terrible and cowardly attacks there carried out by five extremist Islamic terrorists. Attacks which it should be easy for anyone to condemn. This violence has no place in our society, and anyone who is a part of our society should accept and recognise that, obviously. So, why don't we see so-called moderate Muslims condemning these attacks? Could it be that they're all secret terrorist sympathisers? Well, let's rewind a sec. To answer this question, we first have to answer another question. Uh, do moderate Muslims condemn terror attacks? You see, if we say, why don't moderate Muslims condemn terror attacks? Well, that's a bit of a, have you stopped beating your wife type thing, what we call a loaded question. It contains within it a presumption of guilt. So what we're going to do today is go and check and see whether or not moderate Muslims are actually condemning terror attacks. Uh, a brief note about the term moderate Muslim, though. I'm not too happy with it, personally. If... With regards to terror attacks anyway, all you have are extremists and moderates. That's sort of an artificial cropping of possibilities there, as if the most that Muslims can be is moderately against terrorism. The full scale would have a counter to extremists on the other side of the moderates. Extremely nice Muslims, or something who are extremely against terrorism. And they're not being taken into consideration if we just talk about Muslims in terms of extremists and moderates. I'm going to keep saying moderates in this video, if only because that's the language in the question I'm trying to answer, but just keep in mind that I'm not too pleased about it. And one more thing before we get into anything here. I am aware of the meme of the leftist, liberal, social justice type who leaps to the defence of Muslims in the aftermath of a terror attack, saying things like, not all Muslims are bad, and making certain YouTubers' brains explode. You know, how could it be? They say that you would defend Islam, after Muslims did such a terrible thing. You know, these people are deeply religious, conservative, misogynist, anti-democratic, homophobic, you know. All the things that you leftists say that you're against, so why don't you apply those same criticisms to Islam? And I have an answer for you there, don't worry, but you're gonna have to stick around to the end of the video to hear it, I'm afraid. So, that's something to look forward to anyway. So, let's get going. On the 22nd of March 2017, 52-year-old Khalid Massoud drove a car onto a pavement and ran over pedestrians on Westminster Bridge in London, killing four people. He then exited the car and fatally stabbed the police officer before being shot dead himself. Massoud stated in a text message sent before he died that his actions were revenge for Western military intervention in the Middle East. And it wasn't long before people online were wondering, uh, where are the moderate Muslims condemning this attack? Twitter user Tony, with regards to the Islamic State praising the attack, asks, Where are the moderate Muslims condemning? Anna Gars comments, Anybody notice the hordes of moderate Muslims coming out against the Westminster attack? Me neither. And at M. Teko Manx asks, Why all terrorists happen to be Muslim? I haven't seen a single march of moderate Muslims against these scoundrels. Well, M. Teko Manx, if you'd waited just a few days, that's exactly what you would have seen. From The Independent, Muslim women stand in solidarity with London terror attack victims on Westminster Bridge. Muslim women have gathered on Westminster Bridge in a show of solidarity with the victims of Wednesday's terror attack. The group of women spoke of the overwhelming emotion they felt standing on the bridge where dozens of people were mown down when terrorist Khalid Massoud ploughed his car into pedestrians. And the article quotes several people who were there. Sarah Wasim, 57, from Surrey, said, When an attack happens in London, it is an attack on me. It's an attack on all of us. Islam totally condemns violence of any sort. This is abhorrent to us. Being present for the demonstration shows people in the city are united in support of democracy, says Ayesha Malik. The 34-year-old mother of two, also from Surrey, said, As a visible Muslim, I think it was important to show solidarity with the principles we all hold dear, the principles of plurality, diversity, and so on. So that's some Muslims there condemning the terror attack, but that's just one bunch of people on a bridge, you might say. What were some other Muslims up to? Well, let's take a look. 
the Muslim Council of Britain put out the following press release, uh, We are shocked and saddened by the incident at Westminster, we condemn this attack, and while it's still too early to speculate on the motives, our thoughts and prayers are for the victims and those affected, and they also released a video. The attack in Westminster on Wednesday was a cowardly, depraved act, and it was wrong. There is no justification whatsoever for this act of violence, and we condemn it unequivocally. So that's the attack condemned over at the Muslim Council of Britain. Uh, but individual mosques around the country were also getting in on the condemning. Uh, the East London Mosque, the oldest in the capital and the largest in the UK, said, We're saddened by the appalling attack in Westminster that resulted in tragic deaths and injuries. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families of the victims and their loved ones. Such heinous acts of mindless violence must not be allowed to cause division and hatred among our communities, we must remain united and stand in solidarity with all. In Birmingham, 55,000 copies of a booklet, Terrorism is Not Islam, a 12-page guide produced by the city's central mosque to answer questions such as, are suicide attacks lawful in Islam, and does the foreign policy of the West or other grievances justify killing non-Muslims, were handed out at mosques, schools and shops, with the support of West Midlands Police. And I took a peek at that booklet, and it condemns violence and terrorism throughout and at the end it lists all the mosques that supported and endorsed it, so good stuff there. They're clearly getting it done down in Birmingham. And here's another story from the Huffington Post. A London terror attack fundraiser led by Muslims raises thousands to help victims' families. I decided to launch this campaign to raise money for victims of yesterday's terrible attack. I was unfortunately holed up in Parliament for around four hours yesterday and witnessed a lot of terrible carnage. Saw a number of bodies on the streets, paramedics, police everywhere. And it, it moved me quite a bit. And, I, and, and I, when I got home last night, I realised that I'd gone through a terrible experience, but it must be a lot worse for the victims of the attack. And this is my city, uh, these are my neighbours, and I felt that I had to do something. So I called up a, a bunch of my friends and we, we launched this campaign. We've raised over £5,000 already. Uh, and we'd love for everyone to help us to, to do something good and to ensure that at least uh, something positive comes out for the victims of these families. And by the time the Muslims United for London project closed, they'd raised over £29,000 for the victims of the attack. So that's nice. So we've got Muslims condemning the attack, marching with the victims, raising thousands of pounds in support, and, well, I don't want to come to any premature conclusions here, maybe the Westminster attack was an anomaly, you know, maybe it's not always like this, so let's take a look at the other incidents. On the 22nd of May this year, a man called Salman Abadi detonated a nail bomb outside the Manchester Arena in Manchester, killing 23 people, including himself. So, did Muslims condemn this attack? Well, here's a vigil for the victims with a bunch of religious leaders, including Muslims, all holding hands and speaking out against the attack. Here's a bunch of Muslims doing a march to condemn the attack. And here's a donation campaign called Muslims for Manchester that raised over £27,000 for the victims of the attack. Pretty much exactly the same actions that were taken with the Westminster attack, to be honest. So that's two out of three. Uh, let's take a look at the third one, the London Bridge attack. And I don't really want to belabor the point here, but here we go. 100 Muslim leaders gather on London Bridge to condemn attacks. ISIS will lose. Love will win. Your views are not welcome in our mosques or in our communities. Uh, Muslims hand out thousands of roses in solidarity with terror victims. And there's an interesting one here. Uh, more than 130 British imams refuse to bury London attackers. We will not perform the traditional Islamic funeral prayer for the perpetrators, and we also urge fellow imams and religious authorities to withdraw such a privilege, the Muslim leaders said. These vile murderers seek to divide our society and instill fear. We will ensure they fail. We implore everyone to unite. We are one community. In the face of such dastardly cowardice, unlike the terrorists, we must uphold love and compassion. Thousands of Muslims worldwide have likewise condemned terrorism in recent years, as noted in a 712-page Google document maintained by an American Muslim student. Uh, and I'll put a link to that Google document in the description if you want easy access to a seemingly never-ending list of Muslims condemning terrorism. 
So anyway, in relation to the initial question, why don't Muslims condemn terror attacks? Well, I have to conclude, they do. And if someone asks why they don't, then at best they're just ignorant of the truth, and at worst, they're actively being malicious. However, at this point watching this video, I am aware certain people will be thinking, well, some Muslims condemning terrorism or supporting victims or donating money and time. That's all very well and good, but the attacks are still happening, aren't they? These are all reactive measures, let's think proactive. Why aren't these so-called moderate Muslims putting a stop to terror attacks before they happen? I'm reminded of this clip of Sargon of Akkad I touched on in another video. In fact, I would expect moderate Muslims to be, I don't know, presumably dobbing in these potential terrorists, saying to the authorities, look, there, there's a mosque over there where they say some really radical shit, and I don't like it because I think a terror attack might come out of it. That's what we need to be seeing. If you're a Muslim in Britain and you abhor terrorist attacks, if you think this is the worst thing a person can do, you need to remain vigilant within your own community. I'm sorry that this is the case. I'm sorry that you have to be the one. But if you don't, people will think that you are complicit, that you do not mind, that you are in some way permissive of this. Because I tell you what, if this was English people in my community doing this, you're fucking damn right I would be reporting them to the cops. That would be the first fucking thing I'd do. So, well done to Carl, uh, he would heroically and nobly stop the attacks, if he knew about them, that is, by contacting the police. So why hasn't that been happening? Is it because the moderate Muslims secretly like the terror attacks happening, or is something else going on? Well, let's see. And let's first talk about a recent terror attack that didn't happen. Uh, on the 27th of April of this year, British national Khalid Ali was arrested on suspicion of planning a terror attack. He had a backpack with several knives in it when he was arrested by armed police. And when quoting the Times here, security sources said the investigation had been running for some time after a tip-off raising concerns about Mr. Ali's behaviour. The tip-off, understood to be from a family member, had prompted surveillance by police in MI5, it's understood. And furthermore, in March of this year, Mark Rowley, Britain's most senior counter-terrorism officer, said that in 2013, a total of 13 planned terror attacks have been foiled. Uh, quoting Sky News here, Information from the public has contributed to stopping some of those attacks, while figures show it's also helped counter-terrorism police in a third of the most high-risk investigations. Mr Rowley told Sky News, It's my belief that without the public's help, some of the terror plots which we foiled would have been successful. So it seems like, in some cases at least, Muslims are actually contacting the police and preventing terror attacks from being carried out, and those people deserve all the praise in the world for that, they're saving lives. Uh, but you might say, well, what about the free attacks we're talking about? They didn't stop those, did they? Nobody contacted the police to inform on those people, or those attacks would never have happened. Well, you see, the thing is, that's not the case. Uh, for instance, let's look at the Manchester attack. He supports terrorism. Salman Abedi's Muslim peers warned cops about Manchester suicide bomber Salman Abedi five years ago. Police were tipped off by members of the Muslim community that Salman Abedi was a dangerous extremist. Two members of the public called a special anti-terrorist hotline to report the ISIS killer's horrific views. One community worker said two people who knew Abedi at college made separate calls to the police begging them to take action. And furthermore, in the case of the London Bridge attack, well, watch the following clip. And so that day I realised that I needed to contact the authorities. I phoned the anti-terrorist hotline, I spoke to the gentleman, told him why and how. I told him about our conversation and how and why I think he's been radicalised. And basically, you know, just doing my bit. And what came of that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They didn't get back to me, nor was he arrested or, you know, just picked up for any kind of questioning. Were there any other people in the community that tried to object to his views or to try and put him on another path? Yes, he was thrown out of a mosque maybe over a year and a half ago, his local mosque, because of his radical views. So they were reported to the police. 
Like in the cases of the 13 attacks that were prevented, these attacks, the successful attacks, are just the ones that slipped through the net. You know, the police were warned, but were still ultimately unable to stop them from happening. And I'm going to say something not very popular right now, something you'll never hear a politician say, probably because nobody wants to hear it, but it is true. You can't stop terrorism, which is sort of the point of terrorism, really. It wouldn't be scary if it was easily preventable, would it? Uh, let me clarify a few things, though. I'm not saying we shouldn't try to prevent terrorism. You know, you can obviously prevent individual terror attacks, and for the ones that were not prevented, it's always good to examine how and why they were missed by the police. You know, on that level, on an individual level, terror attacks can be stopped. But stopping terrorism entirely? Well, it's a nice goal in theory, but it's just not possible, or at least if it is possible, it's not something that can be done quickly and easily. And in the worst case scenario, uh, the blind pursuit of this goal will lead us down some very dark roads indeed. Uh, and I want to talk about that for a bit right now. I occasionally ask folks on Twitter what they would do to stop terror attacks from happening in this country. And I'd like to run through a bunch of the more common arguments I see in relation to the free attacks I've been talking about. The first argument is nearly always uh, restrict or outright prohibit immigration into the UK. Uh, but of course... The Westminster Bridge attacker, Khalid Massoud, he was born in Kent. Uh, the Manchester bomber was born in Manchester. You know, they're British citizens. Unless you happen to have a time machine, no immigration law you can enact would have prevented these attacks. And even in cases where attackers aren't British citizens and weren't born in the UK, I mean, illegal immigration still exists, and I don't imagine a guy who's fixing to blow himself up and murder a bunch of people is going to be that put off by the thought of breaking immigration laws, to be perfectly honest, but whatever. Another argument is to lay the blame on Islam. Islam should be banned and mosques closed down, I see people say. Now, ignoring that that course of action would involve breaking a whole shitload of laws and committing a bunch of human rights abuses, um, it doesn't make any practical sense in regards to our terrorists we're talking about here. Uh, one of the London attackers was confronted by other Muslims and thrown out of his mosque. You know, he wasn't radicalised there. In fact, the frightening truth of it is that anyone today with an internet connection can radicalise themselves. They don't need to be physically present in order to listen to a bunch of hate speech. They can be reading, watching and listening to all sorts of terrible stuff without ever leaving the house, and if they don't tell anyone they're doing it, there's no way to know. This is why talk of changing immigration laws doesn't really make any sense to me. The problem isn't the people we have in the country, it's the ideologies that lead them to commit attacks, and thanks to the internet, those ideas permeate borders and can infect anyone. You know, the Westminster attacker was a Muslim convert. Before he changed his name to Khalid Massoud, he was called Adrian, and he converted to Islam in his 40s. You know, how do you account for something like that? Adult British citizens who were born here converting to Islam and carrying out attacks, you know, Change the immigration laws to say whatever you want, you're not going to stop attacks like that. So how do we stop people who are using the internet to self-radicalise? Well, obviously the answer is to enact strict internet usage laws and give the police, intelligence services and government free reign to spy on whoever they want, right? Do you see where chasing the impossible goal of zero terror attacks immediately can lead? We've already done away with the separation of church and state and we're banning religions, we're censoring the internet and spying on innocent people, all in the name of preventing something that we might not even prevent. You know, the police aren't perfect, clearly, and they can't catch everyone. And as a side note here, I'm personally not a huge fan of the police, or at least the police as they exist currently, uh, but if the police are the ones who are expecting to deal with terrorism, uh, then why anyone concerned about terrorism would vote for the party that's consistently cut police funding and numbers is a bit beyond me, to be honest. Anyway, so like Tantalus, the harder we reach for the goal of zero terror attacks immediately, the further into the distance it'll move, if you'll forgive me a slightly pretentious reference there. Uh, for instance, let's say we did go all the way down the path of authoritarian censorship, Let's say we gave the intelligence services full access to everybody's personal data and blocked all information from the internet that the government deemed dangerous and, I don't know, made it so anyone could be detained and tortured for information for any reason. Say, like, China. You know, that's how they do it over there. So that must be why there are no terror attacks in China, right? Except, of course, 
that's not true. There are terror attacks in China. Lots of terror attacks in China. And if they can't stop it with their draconian censorship laws and human rights abuses and so on, then I don't see why we'd fare any differently, to be honest. And then what happens when people start committing terror attacks to protest the human rights abuses? It's kind of a vicious cycle there. There is no easy fix for terrorism, and these sorts of knee-jerk responses where we ban immigration, ban Islam, censor the internet and so on, far from fixing the problem, I'd argue they'd only make it worse. And this is where I'd like to address the folks who wonder why leftists defend Islam, and the answer is... we don't, really. Let me explain. You know, as an internet guy who doesn't go on about how much he hates Muslims all the time, I get people sending me a lot of awful pictures, you know, ISIS executing people, homosexuals being thrown off buildings, uh, female genital mutilations being performed on children and so on. All terrible stuff. Uh, and the people who send me these images say, look, this is what Islam is, this is what you're defending, these are the people you want immigrating into your country. And now, what these people seem not to realise is that there's always two people in the pictures they send me. There's someone doing something horrible, sure, but there's also someone having something horrible done to them. And they're people too, you know, they're not just props to prove how evil Islam is, often they're Muslims themselves. And I'm concerned about stopping those sorts of behaviours, of course, but tell me, how would restricting immigration put an end to those sorts of things? It wouldn't. They'd still happen. You know, all restricting immigration would do would give the people who might want to run away from those sorts of things, the potential victims of those sorts of things, one fewer safe place they could run away to. So when I seem like I'm defending Islam, I'm not. I'm certainly not defending the people who carry out terror attacks. I want to defend the people who oppose terrorism and who oppose extremism, but might themselves be hurt by knee-jerk responses to terrorism on behalf of idiotic, short-sighted politicians. And while I was making this video, on the 19th of June, uh, a van was driven into a crowd of people outside a mosque in Finsbury Park in London by a 47-year-old man from Cardiff called Darren Osborne, and he was then thankfully restrained by the crowd before being able to escape or do any further damage. Just one more horrible incident that happened in London recently. Uh, but what can we learn from this attack? Well, I'd hope that it proves that any part of society can be targeted by terrorism, and any type of person can themselves become a terrorist. It is not a specifically Islamic problem, and the more focus we put onto extremist Islamic terrorists, the more we will miss people like this guy. So I'll leave you with a question today. Why don't we see any Welsh guys condemning this attack? You know, could it be because all Welsh people secretly support Darren Osborne and his horrible actions? I don't know. I'm just asking questions, of course. Uh, but if they have been condemning it, I certainly haven't seen it. And I'm not going to bother to go and look. Uh, but I think that, just to be on the safe side, in the meantime, we should probably ban whales. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. It's a bit of a serious video today, eh? Not too many jokes in this one. Uh, let me know what you think about that in the comments. Uh, obligatory Patreon pitch. Uh, head over to Patreon and pledge me a dollar, and in my next video, your name will get onto this increasingly unwieldy list of names. Uh, and I'll probably fall in love with you just a little bit as well. Uh, also, follow me on Twitter and send me a question over on Curious Cat if you like. Alrighty-ho. See you later, folks.